all right people don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification that way you'll know when i upload the next video and you'll be supporting my channel follow me on twitter every time i upload a new video i'll be tweeting Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction. This is Majesty the Fantasy Kingdom Sim Review. Chrome makes me stronger. The fuck is that? This is by the channel Seds in Tech, the best dysfunctional sewer system simulator to this day. I made this on short notice to fill the video void that is May 2018. No one is charged. No one. Okay. All right. Another game from Seth. Uh, this is becoming a trend, right? Every day I'm gonna be reacting to a Seth video because it always lifts me up. I love games since I was a kid, right? I've, in past, uh, you know, year and a half, I've been reacting to lots of things, right? Uh, different events of the world, history, this and that. But didn't know that, you know, channels like this exist, which is a proper entertaining content based on games, reviews and shit. I should have done this from the start, so let's watch it. Remember, if you like my Rick's and Rick's subscribe. Check out the Rick's and Rick's There's a link in the description. Check out the cards. Check out the cards. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Today, I'll be covering one of my favorite games, Majesty, the Fantasy Kingdom Sim. While the game title might have you thinking that you'll be directly managing a kingdom like some strategy game, this is a little misleading. No, as the sovereign of Ardania, you have no direct control over your heroes, and can only influence them with promises of money or guilt-tripping them emotionally into doing what you want. In many ways, being the king of Ardania is similar to being a mother, because, try as you might to lead your children down a good path in life, they will, inevitably, turn to drinking, gambling, and robbing each other's gravestones instead. It's also the first and only game to be voiced by William Wallace. Your Excellency, I offer my most humble introduction. I am Lord Van Fairweather. I was your mother's most trusted advisor. I submit my services to you in that continued capacity. All the NPCs in this game have their own particular assortment of tastes and motivations, which you must play around and accommodate to actually finish your fucking main objective for each mission. For example, warriors will honorably defend the surrounding lands, but are generally too obese to get very far. Rangers <laughs> love exploring and will gladly map out the fog of war. Thieves will steal treasure and wait for other heroes to die so they can loot the I don't know which game was that, like this Rise of Empires? I don't know. In which you just send away your scout and the scout just fucking goes on a frenzy of exploration. Then you suddenly you know, you get a news, holy shit, your scout found some civilizations and he's under attack. I don't know why that always cracks me up, because that is so, uh, you know, real world like, right? That applies everywhere. Anytime somebody goes to a new civilization, oh, look at that new civilization, are they going to shake hands? Yeah, are they, are they going to, you know, uh, exchange pleasantries? No, they're going to attack each other the shit out of their bodies, and wizards will generally disappoint you and die. In the off chance one of them manages to survive long enough to actually level up, you'll have a teleporting demigod capable of conquering the entire map alone. Except he won't. Uh, more likely, he'll use his powers to teleport out of social situations and hide inside his tower, reading shitty dowsions all day instead. Half the fun of the game is watching the AI in bemused frustration while they drink for hours on end while their own tavern is being set on fire by so that you know great powerful guy who hides in his tower sounds very similar from elder scrolls skyrim right graybeards way too powerful you can just use their voice and just you know rip people apart that's why you know most of them don't even speak and apparently they will not intervene in any war we have to run around everywhere and do everything by trolls. Besides their own base inclinations to fight monsters and actually be useful, heroes can also be influenced by offering bounties. These can be placed on unexplored regions to reward exploration, or on monsters and their lairs to reward killing them. Of course, the effectiveness of a bounty is proportional to how dangerous the damn thing is. Paying out a hundred gold reward for a giant rat might be reasonable, but killing a medusa or a minotaur might demand a higher premium. Thieves, however, are not constrained by such obstacles as personal safety, and will die without hesitation for the possibility of a huge paycheck. The biggest fantasy in Majesty is of course having other people pay you taxes. Tax collectors are the lifeblood of your economy, and must be protected at all costs to ensure the future of your feudal society. Tax collectors are fragile and slow, owing to the weight of all the coins they must bravely 
carry back to the keep, leaving them open to attack by gigantic rat men that pop out of sewer grates. Infra okay, <laughs> he actually walks around with a bean bag in his hand. <laughs> okay, where's my taxes? Give me my money. <laughs> structure is a mess in majesty, so you'll need to plan around the dynamically generated hazards that threaten your royal livelihood. Alternatively, you can let all the tax collectors get murdered in the streets, and instead ask the Thieves Guild to diplomatically convince the peasantry to fork over their tax money. Personal treasure and bounties collected no by way. heroes are considered untaxable income and must be extracted from them through other capitalistic means, such as VAT for purchasing better equipment, supplies, and alcoholic beverages. In many ways, most- <laughs> I'm just remembering that word simplified thing, there's a tax for that. <laughs> Of the money you spend on heroes will eventually be redistributed back into your own coffers. Despite lacking control of people, you do have full control of what to build, research, and upgrade. Your choices will influence whether or not the kingdom will thrive and attract the guilds and races necessary for your mission success. Among the races you can choose to live alongside humans are gnomes, which bring cheap and unskilled labor from their ghettos. Dwarves, which bring industry and automated ballista towers to ensure your kingdom's safety. And the elves, which bring... Is this Tolkien's thing? The dwarves always are an engineering mechanical type of people. They make shit. They make contraptions, different type of weapons. Every single lore that has dwarves in it is something like that. They are somewhat rich, you know, because uh, they're not, they, they have technical know-how, so they're going to be somewhat rich, right? That all, that's always the case, and they always know how to make things. It's never that, you know, these are dwarves and they are the best warriors we have. No, 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 they have technical skill. Sinos, gambling and prostitution. The elves also increase the profits of your markets and are very tolerant of other non-humans, which is why they shoot gnome children across Ardania's borders. For some reason, gnomes and dwarves are not as tolerant as the elves and will refuse to live alongside them. Aside from other races, you can also choose to bring in different, mutually exclusive temples, either picking the monks and healers of order or the nature cultists and necromancers of chaos. On top of that, you can also choose to worship the sun or moon temple sect. Alternatively, you can choose to pick none of them like I do and build a temple to Kralm, the pagan god of war who hates every other god because they screwed him over. If you do, you can build no other temple. And who really cares when you can do this? Despite the cozy exterior appearance, Majesty is fucking hard. Completing some of the more challenging missions requires meticulous planning and perfect execution. So don't be surprised if you find yourself retrying them many times. My copy comes with a Northern Realms expansion pack, and altogether you have about two dozen missions. But these can easily each take an hour to finish. No strategy is really perfect, so you'll have to experiment for yourself to find what works best in a given situation. The game is ripe and dripping with charm. It's extremely fun to play and all the voice acting, character interactions, and music make it very memorable. It's aged like wine, and nothing really comes close. You can easily grab it on good old games or Steam for about $10 and have a fantastic time. This review is rather short, much like gnome lifespans, and for this reason, Shut the fuck up! You don't have to pay for it. May has been a busy month, but hopefully June will leave more time for videos. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild whose generous monetary investments make this all possible. Wait a minute, do they... Uh, the, he's talking about donations here, right? So people probably donate him on Patreon or something? What, is that a, you know, some kind of rule that, you know, whenever they donate it's for this specific video and this video costs nothing or something? Or did he, did he not put any ads on this video on YouTube? Is that what he's talking about? I don't know. All right, first of all, the game. <laughs> this is just like your average, you know, uh, strategy type looking game where you just control things. 
But again, all the details and you know sinister things about pagan gods here and there. Okay, that's that's not your Age of Empires type of thing, is it? <laughs> it's completely different. You know what? I, I always played, you know, Rise of Nations, Age of Empires, Civilization things, Sid my whatever that is. And I'm like, eh, all right, fine. This is just that game. Build an empire, fight an empire, who gives a fuck? But this is that kind of game, but has more interesting things to do in it, right? <laughs> this is pretty. I, I didn't. I didn't thought that games like this existed. Strategy games with a storyline like that, voice actor and everything. Damn, this was good. Right, well, that was uh, Majesty, the Fantasy Kingdom Sim. Similar to Chrome makes me stronger. That, that's uh, I guess you know more like a devil in this one. But yeah, by the channel says in tech. If you like Marix and don't like subscribe, check out the Rick Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards with the link cards. Follow me on Twitter and I'll see you next time.